what's up YouTube? We're going to take another prediction check this time the 12th after the Singapore Grand Prix. And before I start, these are the qualifying battles with Alonso being the only one to never be beaten. These are the details and now let's go on with the predictions. Kimi retiring, this was our first, well, Chambers first predictions. And of course, Leclerc was set to replace Reichmann and Ferrari for 2019. And indeed, this happened. So it would be reasonable for him, for him to retire. But just because something is reasonable, doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. Four teams winning races. This hasn't happened and it is very unlikely. These are the results so far with Mercedes having 7, 2, Red, Red Bull uh, 3 and Ferrari 5 races win. Um, Honda, good races, bad races, good but unreliable. We have that point in Bahrain, I mean in China, because as you remember in Bahrain, Pierre Gasly was P4, and in China the two Toro Rosos smashed into each other. It is also true that Honda has used more power unit components than anyone else, which of course gives us the point. 15 cars getting engine penalties. In Singapore, no one got engine penalties of any kind, but we still have the point with exactly 15. Big crash causing a hello controversy. We have that since Spain, but of course the one we're taking now is this one in Belgium that we all remember. Super hard used only once. Well, no, only in only the hard will be seen. Well, was seen in Britain, and well, the medium will only be seen in Japan and Brazil in future races. Liberty Media overcompensate on grid girls. Well, as Singapore Airlines. Seriously, it's noticeable that the people running Singapore Airlines are straight. Liberty Media did spice up the three-race show by introducing the now famous intro, which of course is a point for us. There, 2021 rules include the MPUA, we don't know yet. Bottas finishing P4 or lower in, in Drivers' Championship, he is still P4, but importantly, he is starting to reach um, Raikkonen with only 3 points behind, so it is beginning to seem a little unlikely. Red Bull definitely will not sign Fernando Alonso, the one uh, partnering Verstappen for Red Bull next year will be Pierre Gasly and Alonso will be retiring after 4 years with McLaren. And of course Alonso did win the 24 hours of Le Mans, amazing for him. And Red Bull of course will, in fact they have already signed with Honda. And one new race winner, Chamber of course wouldn't like me to say this, but I am taking Max Verstappen in the Austrian Grand Prix because it was the first time he ever won a race without the Kvyat boost. Vettel outscoring Kimi 2-1, probably, likely, pretty much, no. He is 1.34 so far, and it's unlikely that he will actually reach the 2 ice and the twice mark, especially since Vettel is beginning to seem more like more of an idiot than any time before. Someone getting a penalty ban hasn't happened, but Grosjean was disqualified, which is kind of halfway to a race ban. 
Red Bull finishing P2 in Constructors? Well, no. It's pretty much going to be for... Ferrari. Williams finishing P7 or worse is pretty much guaranteed to happen. And a rubbish red flag, we have that since Monaco, when a loose manhole cover, needless to say any more. That gives us um, 11 out of 25, half a point before the halfway mark of the, bingo, of the chamber bingo ball. Now to my bingo board, my predictions board, um, I have these extra points, I'm gonna go with the rundown. You may remember in Italy where WTF1, Matt, Matthew Gallagher said this. So from two weeks time, we're gonna do race rundown with you guys as well. So there'll be a link in the description below where you can submit your race rundown from the Singapore Grand Prix and then the top three or so will be included in this video. Get submitting in two weeks time. Of course, I am going to participate. In fact, I have already submitted my race rundown and I will continue to do it until the end of the season. And so far, has a hasn't uploaded internet first reactions for the Singapore Grand Prix and geography now uh, last episode was about uh, Mauritius stay tuned the big guy Mexico is coming up next and I already decided that if Checo Perez is mentioned I am going to cross that point or pretty much any F1 driver for that matter no one has come out of the closet Fernando Alonso did make a resting pick reference. Well, not precisely him, but Formula One in a video they uploaded a bit more than a month ago. Couple of pictures. We don't need to recount. These are the photos we are taking for 100% of the point, including Leclerc's first ever topless photo on Instagram. Russia joke, the Russian Grand Prix is in two weeks time, but we don't have to wait until then because Force India uploaded this tweet in Canada. Kimi was of course a little upset that he wasn't going to get his drink in Hungary. You forgot to connect the drink first. Yes, confirmed. Is the drink? Is it on now? Okay, I'm not. Uh... We forgot to connect, Jimmy. You will not have the drink, sorry. And Is it on or not? The drink? No, Jimmy. No. no. You will not have the drink. No, no, no. Is the switch on or not? You, you mean the slow button? No, no. Is my drinking? Is it emptying the bottle or not? No, no, Jimmy, no. You will not have the drink. Crushes in Monaco and Singapore. Finally, we've been waiting for that for that point for so long, and we have this half point for Monaco when Leclerc delighted with Brendan Hartley, and then Checo collides with his teammate. Seriously, four point for that. A race without any DNFs. We have that. From China, where P20 classified to be uh, Brendan Hartley. So, half a point. Disqualified Roman Grosjean in Italy for an illegal flow. Press a dress gate for Lewis Hamilton pretty much speaks for itself, as you may know at this point. I'm so sad right now. Look at my nephew. Why are you wearing a princess dress? <laughs> Is this what you got for Christmas? <laughs> Why did you ask for a princess dress for Christmas? Boys don't wear princess dresses! <laughs> so, yeah, if that's all karma, I don't know what it is. A foreigner giving an interview in Spanish, non native people of Spanish giving an interview in Spanish, that was Felipe Massa in Spain. 10 races with first lap drama, we have that since. 
I think, Belgium. But with that crash in Singapore, we're having 12. Someone being sent back to the grid twice. Of course, we have that since Spain. And these are the results. Verstappen, driver of the day. He was driver of the day for the second time in Singapore. His first of the year being in Austria. He did an amazing drive in Singapore. Finishing in P2. Driver of the day, no bigger score than one third. This is beginning to see very likely with Hamilton, Vettel and Ricciardo having three each. Verstappen having two. Gasly, Leclerc and Alonso having one each. And Perez getting his own from, from Azerbaijan on my count because he deserved more than Leclerc. Yeah. Um, Ocon on the podium, of course he hasn't been and probably won't be this season on the podium of a race, but he was on the podium of qualifying in Belgium. And to be honest, given the, superior, the superiority of the top three teams, that's as far as we're gonna get. That's that is P3. P3. You're joking, you're joking. Woo! Yes! Woo! Well done, guys! Well done! It's Hamilton, it's L, you. Oh my god. The Mexico Trophy, of course... Oh, sorry. Sorry, that not that prediction. No injury or death. We have that point cancelled since Bahrain. When Francesco Sicorini. Andres Manuel won the general election by, a, by an absolute landslide, which is beginning to seem kind of a certain for the country. So, yeah. Verstappen doing something terribly stupid. We have that since China, but this is a photo of his crash in Monaco. We've, of course, gotten used to the halo because of Charles Leclerc in Belgium. Pit stop problems, 10 races. We, of course, have that and we've had that for a long time. Um, Azerbaijan and Italy has gone on skate. And what I'm counting on Singapore was Sebastian Vettel's engineers and strategists making absolutely terrible decisions that eventually cost it in the race. For Cynthia, I hoped that they wouldn't smash into each other. Checo, va ta faire en Kiwi. 19th of September gone terribly wrong. We have that point because of that crash. Thank you, Checo. You ruined Esteban's and my birthday, which is going to be on the 19th of September. And, well, we got that point of it being ruined because of Ocon being smashed into the wall. Thank you, Checo. You've ruined it all. That gives us a total of 18. Points out of 25, well past the halfway mark. For a total of 29 out of 50 on both predictions board, prediction boards combined. And let's now look at the championship span of every driver. This is the formula to calculate it with. And as far as the Singapore Grand Prix, Sorry, I didn't update the text there. Six rounds left, 285 points for the championship leader Lewis Hamilton with 150 points to be contested. As far as the Italian Grand Prix, this was the chart 
with both Red Bulls in semi-imminent danger. And everyone outside of the top six out of contention. Now, Ricciardo has been taken out of contention. Verstappen in imminent danger with a span of just 17 points. Raikkonen and Bottas in semi-imminent danger with 43 and 40 in span. And Vettel having 110, so by no means is the championship battle over. But let's be honest, it's already Lewis Hamilton. The, the Constructors' Championship battle, as far as, the, as far as the Italian Grand Prix, we had everyone except the top three taken out of contention with no one in semi-imminent danger, and no one in imminent danger, with Rebel being the next one to go, but it hasn't gone yet. Red Bull having a span of just 20 points, I mean 80 points, with Ferrari having 221 to Mercedes 258. And everyone outside the top three teams is not only out of contention, but have a span of negative 100 or below. Not exactly favorable, but this would eventually happen. You can follow me on Instagram, of course, and I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time for the Russian Grand Prix.